ever wondered how to file a case in the Supreme Court of India? Navigating the legal system can be a complex task, especially when it involves the highest court of the land. That's why we're here to shed light on the process, making it easier for you to understand and follow. In today's digital age, the Supreme Court of India has also embraced technology, enabling us to file cases online through the new e-filing portal. This advancement has made the process more streamlined and accessible, whether you're an advocate on record or a petitioner in person. From registration to filing the petition, from uploading legible annexures to paying the court fee, we'll guide you through each step. And remember, the e-filing portal also provides a user guide and a help video for further assistance. So, set aside your apprehensions. Let's unravel the complexities of the legal world together. Now, let's delve into the process and make sense of it all. First things first, you need to register on the e-filing portal. Now, whether you're an advocate on record or a petitioner in person, this step is crucial. The e-filing portal is your gateway to the Indian Supreme Court's online services. So let's get you started. The registration process is straightforward you'll need to provide some basic information such as your name, contact details and professional credentials if you're an advocate. Rest assured, the portal is designed to be user-friendly and secure, protecting your information while enabling your access to the court's digital services. This step is all about setting the stage for your case. Once you've completed the registration, you've essentially unlocked the door to the Supreme Court's digital world. And remember, you only have to register once, but the benefits of this step extend to every case you file henceforth. Once registered, you're ready to move on to filing your case. With registration out of the way, it's time to file your petition. This stage is crucial, as it's where you lay the groundwork for your case. The Supreme Court Rules of 2013, along with Form 28, will guide you in this process. The petition is the primary document that presents your case, the issues at stake, and the relief you seek. It's essential to draft it with utmost precision, as it forms the basis of the court's understanding of your matter. Now, you may be filing a fresh case, or you might be submitting interim applications in pending cases. Perhaps, you're even looking to remove defects or refile in fresh cases. Regardless of your situation, the process remains largely the same. First, you'll need to carefully fill out Form 28. This form, as specified by the Supreme Court Rules 2013, is your key to filing a petition. It's a comprehensive document that includes sections for all necessary details about your case. It's important to remember that every detail counts. From the names of the parties involved to the facts of the case, the nature of the relief sought and the grounds on which it is sought, each component must be articulated clearly and accurately. It's worth noting that while this process may seem daunting, it's also an opportunity. This is your chance to lay out your arguments, to present your case in the best light and to set the stage for what comes next. With your petition filed, we move on to the next step, which involves annexures. Annexures are an integral part of your petition. You see, these are the supporting documents that validate your case. They are the substantive evidence that you present to the court. They can be any type of document, such as an affidavit, a certificate, a photograph, or any other type of official record that supports your case. Now, here's where it gets a bit technical. These annexures need to be legible and filed in a separate PDF format. You might ask, why PDF? Well, PDFs are a widely accepted digital format. They maintain the original layout and formatting of the documents, irrespective of the device or software you view them on. Remember, the clarity of your annexures is paramount. The court needs to be able to easily read and understand your documents. So ensure they are clear, well-organized and labeled correctly. With your annexures filed, we're getting closer to the finish line. Now, it's time for the relevant application and the all-important court fee. Once you've successfully registered, filed your petition and attached the necessary annexures, the next crucial step is filing the relevant application. This application is not a one-size-fits-all. It varies 
depending on the nature of your case, so it's essential to pick the correct one. This is where the Supreme Court rules of 2013 and Form 28 come into play, guiding you through the specifics of your application. Remember, each case is unique and so is the application associated with it. Be precise, be accurate and follow the guidelines. Now, let's talk about the court fee. It's not just a random number. The court fee should be sufficient at the time of filing. This means it should cover all of the costs associated with your case. It's like the fuel that keeps your case running in the court's engine. Don't underestimate the importance of the court fee. It's not just a formality, but an essential part of the process. Paying an insufficient fee can lead to unnecessary delays or even the dismissal of your case. So, be meticulous, be thorough. Make sure your application is correctly filed and your court fee is fully paid. This is your journey, your case. Every step you take brings you one step closer to the resolution you seek. With your application filed and court fee paid, you're all set. And there you have it. The process of filing a case in the Supreme Court of India. Let's take a moment to recap. First off, you need to register on the e-filing portal if you're an advocate on record or a petitioner in person. Following that, you file your petition, adhering to the Supreme Court rules of 2013 and using Form 28. Remember, this is where you can file fresh cases, interim applications in pending cases, and even the removal of defects or refiling in fresh cases. Then, you ensure your annexures are legible and filed separately in PDF format. Next, you file the relevant application and pay the necessary court fee. Always keep in mind that the e-filing portal is your guide. It provides a detailed step-by-step -step process for e-filing. And if you need further assistance, there's a help video and manual available on the portal. Remember, it's a process that requires attention to detail, but with this guide, you're well equipped to navigate it. Good luck.